agenda is, maybe even the enslavement of the human race as a remnant, uh, as, or, or something in as a scenario like that. And then finally, a third category whereby whereby none of the other two categories would even even hint at the possibility or the horror of what's happening. And it's a very compartmentalized system. I can only begin to guess, even though that I've been in thick of things from the outer core to the second core level, but I have no idea what's in the third core level, no way at all. And because it's so complicated, I've heard some of this run by me, it's so fantastic, it makes a Star Wars or a movie or a or a uh, Star Trek novel, uh, Babylon 5 novel, it's like a kid's toy. I mean, uh, it's too fantastic for me to believe. So uh, uh, I can I can assume that uh, other it might be a, a other worldly uh, plan or scenario for taking over the planet. But once again, I can't prove it, so I don't talk about it. Right here, I'm only basically to discuss. Basically, what I know of the alien agenda and through deep underground military base and the application of an idea during, during this kind of activity for the U.S. government. Uh, I'll have a question and answer period in a short time. I've already talked about uh, old firefights. Uh, I will tell you right now, I'm breaking major federal law, I'm breaking my entire security oath system. Uh, security oaths, in fact, here's a copy of my 1985 security clearance. You might zoom in on that if you care to. Can you do that? Yeah. yeah. Tell me when. Okay. And of course, it's got a picture of me. It's got Department of the Air Force. It's got uh, a control number here. It's got a digital control number and name here. It's got a UPC stripe here. It's got a level L. Uh, that was only issued to people that worked at Green Lake and Area S4. And our restricted zone R4808E. This is a computer chip camera in the card itself. You didn't wear the card like you had. You wore another security card. This one wasn't worn. This was used to get you into the main gate. There was a large machine. There was, I can't draw it. There was a large machine that looked like a, kind of like a, 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 a curved. Uh, the bottom part, you put the card in, and uh, you put your thumbprint on. You're supposed to actually. Some of them had two of them. Uh, I don't have a second thumb, so this one was made of one. There's normally two here in the L for a normal person would be up through the UPC strike. So there was one, and I put my thumb there on the bottom, and if it would flash green, I'd flip the switch. And uh, then I'd insert the card in the, the second part of the uh, control unit, and there would be a thing that would hold my forehead, and I could block off my left eye, and I'd stick this thing up to my, up to my uh, right eye and take a picture of my retina. And then if the green light went off, it would I could remove my card and I could leave it at the guard shack and I'd wait for anywhere from 45 minutes to several hours waiting for the next ship to start. I'm breaking all my security oaths by coming out in the open and talking about this because not only are we dealing with a kind of technology I believe that we should we should uh, be out that should be out in the public should at least this kind of 50 and 60 year old material should be out in the public. Uh, I feel that, that in coming clean, so to speak, uh, I don't know quite how to explain it other than the fact that when I initially was told these underground bases were, were for uh, security uh, in case of nuclear attack in the United States, and uh, it was a total lie. When I found out that aliens were actually entrenched in half of these bases, and uh, these bases, by the way, cost a minimum of $17 billion a piece. The black budget garners $508 billion a year. 
$1.023 trillion every two years. That's two-year-old information. It's probably more like $1.3 trillion now, which is about one quarter of the gross national product of the United States. It's no wonder why our economy is kind of like up and down here and there. Uh, once again, you might ask, well, how in the heck uh, we've only been told, uh, we the public have only been told there, there's a total defense budget of $447 billion, so how can that be $500 billion going on behind the scenes? First of all, black budget or it means hidden budget. Hidden budget is totally hidden from congressional view and oversight, cannot be audited uh, by the U.S. Treasury system at all. It is a separate, independent taxing body entity within the federal government structure, which, by the way, is illegal, totally illegal. It's primarily financed by drug operations, by the CIA and the NSA and the Drug Enforcement Administration, and now the FBI is implicated also. Uh, recently, there was an FBI man who came out of the cold, so to speak, and told all only to find himself uh, murdered and he took a vacation in England and himself murdered. That was in the paper about three years ago. Anyway, nine attempts on my life have been taken all since the first of January of this year. Well, I've been shot at and run off the road times when I run off the road, one of which is uh, I'm a very good driver. I used to race cars for somewhat of a hobby type living. Uh, I used to race everything from Formula One on down, uh, motorcycles and stuff like that when I was a kid, so I lived kind of, kind of on the edge all the time. Uh, so I became a very good driver and a very defensive driver, and so if somebody's trying to run me off the road, like before my Vegas talk, I dropped a friend of mine off at 29 Palms area and saw another friend in the, in the uh, Marine Corps hospital who's dying of cancer. And on the way out of there, you have to go, you have to skirt around a whole mountain range. You just can't take the easiest way and straight line out. It'd be nice, but it doesn't work that way. You have to skirt around these mountains. And, uh, I had a Ford Taurus with a police interceptor motor roughly an eight liter motor, it's a real monster. And um, the, uh, there were two long E350, Ford E350 vans and they all had uh, uh, Air Force markings on them. They, were, uh, they all had guns and they were all shooting and they were missing. And, and uh, I flew by them and took a picture of their uh, as a blur, I took a picture of them, got a very good picture of their license plate. And uh, then, they, then they sped up and tried to, tried to squeeze me in this way. And then finally I just slid right in the middle of the road. And the road was wide enough for basically one-way traffic. And one of them went over, rolled over, and kept going down for about three or 400 feet down a very steep ravine. The other one was a shallow ravine about 10 feet deep. And, uh, I just kind of peered over, got my, got the hook my seatbelt, peered over, and there was a big fire started on down there. I could hear people screaming, but I'm sorry, that's their, their deal. I just kept on going. That was one way. Uh, recently, I got shot at when I was with a retired FBI agent. We were going to go to a Patriot talk show down near Salem, Oregon. And I got shot here, here, and here what's called a CIA cocktail. Uh, uh, I don't have normal ribs after Dulce, New Mexico fiasco where my ribs are burnt and cauterized, my fingers are burnt off of me, uh, etc. Uh, I have a plastic plate in here, a nylon plate that <coughs> has bumps on it, looks like ribs and everything, so those bullets just kind of just lodged in this thick, five eight inch thick plastic movable plastic thing on the inside and uh, 
uh, that was dug out.